No. Yeah, the neighbours have been complaining to the um, property manager that he's been doing like naked naked seances out in the backyard and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. So anyway, we put the rent up before I knew all this. We put the rent up because it's well overdue. Um, we haven't really put it up much. So uh, he decided, no, it's too much. So he was going to leave. But <laughs> now I'm still stuck on stories. naked seances. Hang on, backpedal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're listening to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard. Here's your host, Tabitha Bright. Hello and welcome to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard, where I get to speak to property investors from around Australia about their investing journey. My name's Tabitha Bright and I'm the head of coaching here at Positive Real Estate, where we help people build wealth through property. With over 8,000 clients across Australia and New Zealand, there are some incredible stories to tell, which hopefully make your investing journey that little bit easier and will inspire you along the way. So my guest today is Tom Petherbridge. Tom has recently made a very courageous choice. He's learnt to deal with some incredibly tricky tenants including navigating a naked seance or two. Yes, you heard that right, a naked seance. So I'll, uh, I'll keep you in suspense. Enjoy this conversation with Tom. Hey, Tom, good to have you here and uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, well, thank you for coming. <laughs> I've always... <laughs> Always a little bit worried that I have to twist people's arms, but um, everyone's been so forthcoming and generous with um, with allowing me to pick their brains and tell That's their stories. Right. You must be busy <laughs> with it because he asked me back in October when I was camping. So, oh. yeah, finally got me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely been a bit crazy. But um, And so tell me because um, you were camping yeah. for a reason, right? Because when I first met you, you were living the corporate lifestyle and yep. Yep. Tell corporate us a bit about that. Executive pay, all that sort of stuff. Um, yep. you know, been up yep. in the, working in HR. Yeah. Working in HR the last three and a half years and um, wow. been in the manufacturing or mining industry all my career. And yep. uh, yeah, the HR role, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Absolutely loved it. But um it's a serving role and I just found I was getting tapped out every day. Uh, I'm an introvert. So you heard the old saying, you know, the five coins where you wake up in the morning and you give it, you give away your coins. And by the end of the day, you got no coins left. Well, that was me. And um, I was actually coming to work the next day with no coins. I was feeling really down. So I actually popped. Um, I actually fell in a heap at work and uh, oh. had to had to walk out, had to leave. The boss was very yep. good. He uh, gave me about a, a month uh, off to to think about it and um, yep. think about what I wanted to do. And I pretty much through that exercise just decided that you know life's too important. Um, there's too many other things I want to do. Uh, I'm too much stuck in a rut of where I was, and I just had to move on. So had nowhere to go. Um, decided well, you know always wanted to go camping. We wanted to do the great trip around Australia before COVID hit. Literally three or four days before the lockdown, we were about to strap on the camper and go around Australia. So that got canned um, and we've had several other holidays canned. So we just decided, you know what? Got my wife, she took long service leave. The school was good. And uh, we went camping for two months around Victoria. So I didn't have to worry about lockdowns and stuff. So fantastic. Because you live regionally. Um, yes. Yeah, well, so you weren't stuck in a 5K radius or anything like that? No, we were fairly blessed in the Glenelg Shire or Portland area because we didn't see much of COVID over this way. So wonderful. we didn't go into too many lockdowns. Um, yeah. But, yeah, we just travelled around all of Victoria two months. We still haven't seen it all. My God, there's so much to see. Um, but we had to leave Gippsland because we just got rained out, so we came back home. Uh, that was good before oh, Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, it sounds fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a number of clients. Um, one of the earlier podcasts, um, Agatha and Warwick Moreland, if you get a chance to check that out, um, I've got them on Facebook and they're back um, circumnavigating Australia. And they've got, they bought a massive truck. They've been doing it for a couple of years, but it's a yeah, right. big truck that's been kitted out 
it's painted black. It's called Black Betty, and they live in that now. And really? they've really? recently, <laughs> oh, that's great, isn't it? Yeah. And they've, they've recently um, sold all their possessions pretty much, yeah, other right. than what they can fit. And Agatha, uh, Warwick, I think, is engineering. Agatha comes from an um, architecture background. Right. And so she's collected lovingly over the years these pieces of furniture and stuff that, you know, architects are passionate about. And yep. she had to, she sold all this stuff off and got rid of all her possessions. And she said it was tough, but it was, when I spoke to her the other day, she said it was actually really freeing. Yes, and, um, yes. Incredibly bright. I don't know if I could give up all my creature comforts, <laughs> but <laughs> and I've got three cats that wouldn't fit in the truck. But it's it's interesting to see some of the choices that people are making. And yeah. this, I think you know, it's not realize that all the material well. possessions that we have uh, are meaningless when we're gone. Um, yeah. So we really got to make the most of the experiences. And we just went around Victoria in a camper and. Um, mm. Yeah, it was it was great. But when we came home, look, we've got a two story nice house in Portland. And when we came yep, home, yep. we couldn't believe how big the place was. Like we're in the kitchen and we're looking around, staring, and our daughter's looking at us, going, "What are you doing?" I said, "This place is huge." Yeah, That's we were living great. outside. Yeah, we had rivers and lakes and things all around oh, us with no walls. We come into this house and it just felt like a castle because it was just That's all awesome. unnecessary storage and space and everything. So it really gave us an eye opener that. Yeah, we, we do live well, uh, but we don't necessarily need to when you can actually go and do what we did for a couple of months around Victoria. So you can do it easy. This is uh, awesome. And so you've started your own business now, so, um, yeah. which so is exciting. Thought long and hard. Um, did a little bit of study, trying to think of what I was going to do. I've always been practical with my hands and I've always renovated the, my PPRs. Um, so I've had a number of them over the years. So I've always done them up. So I've been good with my hands. So I thought, well... We'll see how we go. So I started up a business and kicked off the handyman thing and, uh, oh, my God, it's busy. <laughs> Getting phone calls and, uh, and it's not just, look, can you change the washers on me tap? It's can you maintain my property? You know, it's like. That's awesome. Yeah, it's like can you bring it up to scratch because people just live in, a lot of people just live in their houses and they don't care much for the garden or the deterioration of the property and that sort of thing. Wow. And they just put up with it. And then they decide on a couple of years, I'm going to have to sell or retire. I need to get this up to scratch. And they can't get tradies because tradies are flat out and there's not enough of them. So, yeah. Well, Better for me. Moving, right? <laughs> there's plenty of work. Bonus for you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, yeah. after after I spoke to you, I actually started Googling property up in Portland. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, because I'm always looking for somewhere regional that I might move to one day. And, um, and yeah, so I had a bit of a nosy round. There's some beautiful, beautiful wee places there. It's a beautiful spot. Yeah, it's a great oh. spot. Beaches everywhere. But the property's gone nuts here. So the last couple yeah. of years, it's doubled in value. I've missed, missed my moment, really, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, and so... Talking property, you bought your first um, principal place of residence in Townsville. So regional again, um, because you eight. were, tell me a little bit about that. You were working at Nickel Refinery back in? Yeah, back in about 98. I was, my first gig, because you know, I was born and raised in Victoria and studied in Bendigo, but my first gig yeah. was in Charters Towers and um, just rented there and I hated it. When Jason was born. Charters Towers. Yeah, he grew up and lived in Charters Towers. Right. Okay. He's a similar age. You never know what I bumped into it. <laughs> you probably did. You were. You never know. So I rented in Charters Towers. It was $140 a week then. And I hated that. It just felt like just bleeding money. So that was oh. my first taste of renting and couldn't stand it. We then moved to Townsville. I got a gig at the uh, at the refinery there. Um, my wife was working. Wife did, my yeah, wife was working in Townsville. Um, we rented there for a little bit and then decided, now let's buy a place in Heatley, which is a DHS place up on stilts. Oh, yeah. 99 grand we got it for. 99,000. Uh, that was at like double me pay at the time. So crazy. Well, I thought it was a lot of money back then being my first place. You know, your first place, you're always nervous and, oh, you know. Yeah. Um, we're so what only was your mortgage? A- was it like a 20%? A Deposit or ten percent? What did you have to? No, put I think I only did like a ten percent from memory. Um, yeah, interest rates grand. were a fair bit higher back then, seven <laughs> percent or something. wasn't too yeah. bad. But, um, huh. 
yeah, we're only there for like about 18 months and then we left, came down to ta- ta- Tasmania, but I sold the place because I thought we'll, we'll need the, the cash behind us to maybe do it again and um, regretted doing that because I sold it, I think, for 101. <laughs> 101. <laughs> Something like that. I can't remember now. Um, about five years later, they were going for about 400,000. They had the boom. The boom took off in the mining oh. industry up north, and they 350, 400 grand they were selling for. I was like, oh my god! So that was the first lesson I had about, you know, buy well and never sell. And never sell. <laughs> it, and it's interesting because this is a conversation we have as coaches again and again and again. And it's, you know, sometimes it's frustrating holding property, and but and you don't control when those booms happen. And then when they yeah. happen, they can be like extraordinary. I mean, that's a what, yeah. 400% return or something. Yeah. Like, well, we had um, no idea it was coming. Um, no. And I didn't really know real estate back then other than, yes, I want to own my house. I didn't want to rent. Um, didn't necessarily seem as long-term investments. I just saw it as I don't want to yeah. put money into someone else. I'd rather own yeah, the place put myself it in your own time. So, so, yeah, I went down to Tassie and um, rented a company house there because there was nothing worth buying where I was down the West Coast. <laughs> down there for a couple of years and then we... Um, Went to Parks, New South Wales, and uh, I bought a place there. It didn't look like much, and for some reason we went back to it. We nearly bought some other thing, which is a bit newer. This one was a bit older, and we went back and had another look at it and thought, oh, let's get it. And we got it for 140 back oh. then. It was a four-bedroom house, big shed, all that sort of stuff. Oh. And, um, we were there for four years. When we left there, it went for two hundred. We sold it for two thirty-five. So that was good. Okay. Yeah, hundred grand up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't bad. Got my money back. Yep. Um, but again, everything still doing everything with me PPRs. And every time I was in one, I was always doing them up. You know, always renovating and always bringing up their oh, quality, yeah. their value, and adding value. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was Parks. Then we came to Portland after that and uh, bought a little farmlet on five acres. That was 350 grand. Um, yep. I thought that was a lot of money. That just felt like, oh my God, have we done the right thing? Back then, that was 15, yeah. 16 years ago. Um, yeah. It felt like a huge amount of money. Yep. Uh, we sold that in oh, 2017, decided to move into Portland because the daughters sort of got tired of the, the farming community or that sort of, they wanted to be in town with their friends. Um, sold it for 490. Yep. Uh, that was after I did a lot of work there. I built a tennis court, big shed, did a whole bunch of things there. Um, yeah, and then bought this place here. So place I'm in now is right in town. It's a two-story, got it for 470. It's currently valued at 700. No. <laughs> no. So, no. What I to can't. do next? <laughs> It's a great place. We love it. But um, we might move on one day, you never know, and hopefully the Don't sell it. There. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> There's a selling thing that's been going on. Yeah, but then, there is. <laughs> but then you have gone off and then invested. So you came to positive real estate when? About 2015. Mm. So very late. Yep. Um, so, yeah, been in the game for what, six years now, I suppose, with yeah, PRE. It was longer than that, but it's only about six years. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I've gone through yeah, six properties. So I started off with Thornlands. Um, yeah. So I think you got me into the PRA initially, got my attention with all the, I don't know how I actually got into it initially, but yeah. then I met up with Elaine, um, who was my coach at the time, and she yeah. got me signed up. And uh, that felt like a oh, $10,000 sign. I was like, oh, what have I done? What have I done? But, um, <laughs> best move I'm I ever cult. made. Best move I ever made. Um, it actually Fantastic. drove me to get invested in it, get you know, put the time and the energy into it, and I really enjoyed it once I got into it because really discovered I, I just love property, um, especially the buying side of it. <laughs> I'll yeah, get to the selling side, of it, isn't it? it. Really yeah. enjoyed it. But yeah, got a place in Thornlands, um, townhouse, still oh, got yes. it. Uh, the original tenant just moved out, um, so that whole time I had the same tenant, although I only just found out. She passed away, and her son, who was living with her, is there. But so glad he's moved out because apparently he's a 
Um, what do you call it? A devil worshipper. <laughs> a what? Mum passed away and he's lost the plot, what it sounds like. So, no. Yeah, the neighbours have been complaining to the um, property manager that he's been doing like naked, naked seances out in the backyard and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. So, anyway, we put the rent up before I knew all this. We put the rent up because it was well overdue. Um, we haven't really put it up much. So, uh, he decided, no, it's too much. So, he was going to leave. But <laughs> now I'm still stuck on stories. naked seances. Hang on, backpedal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because, do you know, I used to work, years and years ago, I used to work for the Historic Places Trust of New Zealand. And I used to be like the tour guide for this old church in New Zealand that was no longer owned by the, the, a church. Yep. Um, it was Anglican originally. And we came in one time, because you'd show tour groups around. It was a big, almost cathedral-style church. Like, it was massive. Yep. Yep. And I remember... Um, going up to the altar and discovering that somebody had turned all all of the like the crosses and all of the paraphernalia upside down and there was yeah, like right. paraphernalia yeah and somebody had been doing um like you know bad juju whatever you call it yeah, we yeah. had to actually get because the church was consecrated we had to get somebody in to do the whole you know cleanse and yep. whatever I, I don't Exorcism. know a lot about yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I'm still stuck on the naked seances oh I, look I, I really didn't know much of, oh, I knew nothing of this all I knew was that I had my original tenant she was looked after by basically Centrelink for whatever reason. I didn't get into it, but she could yep. pay the rent. Her son <laughs> grew up with her. She was a single mum. And and uh, it's only now I've got a new property manager. Some of the truths have been coming out. The previous ones weren't telling me. Um, but, yeah, she was a bit freaked out, um, the new property manager. And it's even to the point where right. even earlier this week I was getting calls from her because he was moving out. But he was also outside her door, beating on the door with his mates, um, threatening her. And uh, no. I, yeah. yeah, so you can really get some weirdos. Um, <laughs> you can do. But he's gone. That, so that's good, definitely so. run for the books. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, goodness yeah. knows, there could have been headless chicken sacrifices and all sorts of stuff. Well, it's yeah. um, <laughs> so we're in there. Knows what you'll discover in the drains. Like, my head goes straight to all of the crime shows I've ever watched in my life. My mum's addicted to crime, and I've I like to think I've outgrown it. I'm, but every so often, all those books that my mum used to have, it's um okay. Well, that's interesting. And <laughs> um, do you know what I do? And I'm I'm not superstitious. I'm not religious, but um. <laughs> I would still but, get some yeah. sage and go and do a bit of a dance around and <laughs> well, we've, we've just replaced the carpet. Definitely we've painted do all something. the walls inside. We're replacing a curtain. We're doing a bunch of maintenance while there's no one in there because I've done nothing with it because I've had a one tenant for six years. Yeah. So there's a whole bunch of work going on inside and new tenant work yeah. moves in next week. So get them to light a sage stick. Oh, At the very so least. Lovely. They're probably witches. Who knows? I don't know what's going to happen at night to those next tenants. God, I wouldn't be telling them any of that. My well, goodness. I'm sure Angela will look after me. She'll tell me what's going on. She's my new property manager, so she's good. Oh, well, you've yeah. had a few interesting stories, and sometimes it's like I'll, I'll meet people that have had multiple properties for many years, and they've never even had, like, the – smallest thing go wrong and then i'll have people that from day dot yep. just have challenges um i've had a couple of quite big ones only because they were expensive yep. um, like you know a uh, cracked cracked mains and stuff like that oh, that nobody yeah. knew about that seeped right through the house and stuff but nothing Nothing too crazy. Nothing yeah. too crazy. Well, I had a good you, run there for a while. The first few years, no issues. I thought everyone else is complaining. Geez, they, they, you know, why am I getting it so lucky? And next year, you know, I've had like three really interesting events. Um, so this is the most recent one on my first property. Um, oh, yeah. My second property was at Newstead. Um, so I bought an apartment there yeah. with the SMSF. Um, yeah, yeah. I think PRE introduced me to the SMSF club um, back when he had Justin on for one of the nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get into Melbourne, which is always fun. Um, 
Yeah, so I signed up with the SMSF club and did some more things with the super and bought an apartment in Newstead, which was a really nice one. Um, that's been an interesting experience. So, yeah, first tell me minute, about that. Because... And great rent. Then I got tempted, like many of us do, with short stay. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, I did a bit of uh, looking around and short stay was already happening in that same building with another landlord of one of the apartments. So I found uh. out he was using um, Anchil. I had no idea one from the other. So I thought, well, they're already there. Um, yeah. Seems easy, seems convenient. There's a yeah. lesson. Uh, if it's yeah. easy and convenient, it's probably not going to be. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> that is true though, right? Yeah, they were great to sign up and get me on board. Really good. They got prop uh, furniture in there, everything. It took ages. First time was it took me ages to get receipts or any sort of itinerary of the furniture that I purchased because I purchased a plan of furniture. Uh, couldn't get any details. It took me months just to go. I thought, mm, this is a worry. And uh, for about 12 months, it was okay. I was really pulling in some good rent. I thought, yeah, this is, this is okay. A little bit more tedious and a bit more effort than seemed necessary. But but then, uh, yeah, there was about three or four months where the rent just wasn't coming. And um, they were still putting tenants in, but I was about seven grand in arrears and um, finished up getting the uh, Department of Fair Training involved. And that was hard uh, because initially it was Queensland and then it went back to New South Wales because Anshaw and New South Wales. Then it went back to Queensland because the property was in Queensland. Oh, then they decided, yeah. no, it really should be New South Wales. And oh, just dragged on and on and on. But anyway, two years later. Because they went under, didn't they? This, this they route. did. Um, yeah. They went under and then uh, there was a lot of dodgy things going on. A lot of um, landlords or sort of People that had signed up with them were, were screwed over and um, not many of them wanted to speak up or do anything. So DFT were really happy that I, I gave them all my, because I really keep a lot of detail. Yeah, you're good very with your account keeping. Information and uh, they were wrapped. Yeah. I, I just gave them statements and all sorts of things and I just allowed them, to take, allowed them to take them to the cleaners and I got my money back before Christmas, which was Whew, awesome. two years in arrears, but we got it. So it was great. Awesome. Yes. And then, and um, and you were amazing during that because I know we had a couple of conversations about that, and you kept your head with it and um, and just oh, worked through yeah. it step by step. Yeah, it was not yeah. much more I could do. Um, short of flying up there and punching some bloke in the head, it was more like, well, let's just let T do their job. Uh, it was going to take a while, and yeah. uh, give them all the information they need and just support them, yeah. and, and and they got there. Um, but. Yeah. Interesting one there is the uh, landlord insurance doesn't help you in those scenarios. So, um, Rent, you know, oh, because it's short stay, is that why? Yeah, well, and it's not um, rent necessarily that the tenant hasn't paid. It's what the property manager are keeping. Oh. So landlord insurance doesn't cover that. Ah, oh, uh, doesn't cover dodgy dodgy property manager. No, no. Oh, so you can claim if the, if the tenants are paying funny buggers. But, yeah, oh. speaking of which. That was Clyde North. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go to Clyde North, <laughs> <laughs> the good news, the, the overall outcome, though, because you're – what did you purchase that one for? Uh, 585 I think. 585 you know? Awesome. And so you've – since returning to the permanent tenant arrangement, you've now got a, a good tenant, yeah? Yeah, well, first I went to Labode. Um, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I actually contacted you and yep. was it Laura or someone else um, helped me out and put us onto Labode to yep. keep it going as a short stay yep. arrangement and get yep. some cash flow. Yep. They were brilliant. They were very good. So yeah, because I think that's who this, TRE um, work with. Deal with the Labode. Labode. They, yep. are, they are very good. Yep. Um, but yeah, I got sort of got tired of it and uh, yeah. I thought, well, let's just see what I can get for a fully furnished apartment in Brisbane. Yeah. And yeah, 600 bucks a week. I've got a doctor in there who's awesome. sort of fly and fly out and she's happy. And um, the rent will probably go up one day because things are looking really yep. good yep. there. So they are. Yep. back to full term tenant. The reason why I sort of switched to that is I was getting a lot of pressure from the on-site property manager who was not happy with the overall arrangements with short stay because they, oh. there was issues with security, there was 
Uh, permanent tenants complaining yeah. about people coming and going and music and noise and, uh, and it just became more and more grief from the on-site property manager yeah so i thought look if i had my house on my own property land maybe i'd do that again yeah. but i just decided it's too much grief let's get out of this let's get some good rent and it turns out i've bloody did i've got some great rent so I'm happy. perfect uh, perfect Oh, well, we yeah. like it. We like a happy ending. Yes. So quality, yeah. quality tenant, great rent. Yeah, good location. Um, and, yeah, and we are seeing those first price movements um, with that yeah. stuff too. So yeah. um, happy to hang around after this and um, look at some vowels because I know Thornlands has gone up. I've had a couple of... Yeah, um, nothing moving there. There's too much building going on still. No, no, I'll, I'll challenge you on that. I guarantee. Okay. When, yep, yep. When you I do and check I it down. regularly, and they're not giving me any. <laughs> of any of them, so yeah, uh, no, nah, I think I think you'll find it's like literally um, in the last like two months, it's um, right. started to really kick off. Yeah, I expect it will with the Olympics coming towards oh, Brisbane. With so everything like there's like so three much properties money. in Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much migration and stuff happening in Brisbane. Oh, yeah. It's really a different place now. Yeah. Um, and then, so Clyde North, because I had a number of clients that bought in Clyde North and um, for some of them, they got initial uplifts in equity. I think one of my clients got 40 grand initially from, you know, oh, from, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. now, I, I mean, what, what do you reckon now? Must be. So, Clyde North, um, I got that one for about four forty. Yeah, um, I think it's about five fifty at the moment. Yeah. Valuation, um, and that's sort of only market valuation. It's not really had it properly assessed. Yeah, um, that's awesome. But yeah, it's a busy area. It's um, yeah. it's interesting. I've been past it a few times. The, the actual property I've got overlooks the lake um, oh, across the road. And there's a shopping center just down the road. Yeah. It is a fantastic spot. So yeah. really happy with it. Um, yeah. We had a shock and ten in there, <laughs> um, and thank God I had Emma Verite as my uh, property oh, manager. He was our lovely M, absolutely yeah. brilliant. Um, Isn't she amazing? Oh, because the tenant was good to start with, paying rent, yeah. no issues, and then all of a sudden rent just stopped, and he was being difficult, wouldn't communicate. Um, Emma cracked it with him real, real good. She just took took it by the bull by the horns, and she was going to get him out for me. And yeah, we finished up going to the. Um, what do they call it? Fit, uh, VCAT. VCAT. Yeah. Yep. Her and I both went there eventually and he didn't show. And we found out these missus didn't even know he was doing all this. So there was some really dodgy stuff going on. Um, so tell so me that, more about that. Because... <laughs> so the, the guy who had his name on the tenancy agreement, he got his wife and two kids there with him as well. Um, but it sounds like she had no idea he wasn't paying the rent. Um, oh. we suspect maybe he was fooling around, we're not sure, but Gambling. yeah, there was something really going down. Gambling. So, yeah, glad to see the end of him, and yeah. uh, yeah, got me money back there thanks to uh, landlord insurance, so that was really good. <laughs> um, awesome, yeah, good. yeah, and you had good problem. support with them, which is really good to hear. Oh, brilliant! And uh, yeah. I know they say, you know, if you're going to get a property manager, it's worth getting a quality one. Um, I can't vouch for that enough. Um, yeah. you, know, you, you know, you try and I might be able to squeeze them down from 8% to 7%. Don't do it. You know, it's, it's, it. it's not. I'm Water. so Water glad Water you say that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because so. in real, in real terms, like you're talking a few hundred dollars. Oh, it's and yeah. If for the right person, like that's managing your asset, your half yep. a million dollar asset, yeah. you'd want to quibble over a couple of hundred bucks to get an outstanding result. To me, that's just that's just ego at work. If you're trying to squeeze your property manager with another percent, I mean, if they're yeah. worth it, um, you know, give yeah. them another percent. Yeah, you know, give them really work oh. for you. Yeah, so. I just need to go snapshot that yep. <laughs> let everyone yep. know because it's so true it is, it is so so true i remember um reading adolf de Roo's book i don't know if you've heard of him he's he used to be up there with kiyosaki robert kiyosaki and the wealth okay. creation he was the property guy yep. and i remember reading a book of his it would have been 20 years ago and he said the same thing he said he doesn't and he was hyped about his money like like a <laughs> I can't even think of an analogy that would be suitable for a podcast. But he he was saying, like, he doesn't understand why people quibble over 
paying a property manager yeah. um, properly. And yeah. this guy's got literally billions of dollars of property around the globe um, saying don't quibble about a property manager. So mm. I think we'll, we'll put that one in light. So I think that's the quote for the day. What a good one. Um, yep. I still, I'm still stuck on naked. Um... <laughs> I keep going back to that. The only other thing I can think of, you know, is um, I hope my father doesn't watch this, but my dad was a bit of a hippie in the day, right? And he has been known to attend the odd nudist colony type thing. So he, he hired a caravan on some land from the Druids in wellington in new zealand oh, wow. and yeah because he wanted a place that he could go because he's he can be very artistic my father so he wanted a place he could go and do his art on this hillside overlooking the bay and and the, and the deal was that um as long as he didn't mind them coming and doing their druid thing um once a month when the yeah. full moon he didn't know what it entailed and it <laughs> entailed a bunch of people my age and older, so 50s and older, getting their kit off and literally <laughs> dancing around, you know, a bonfire under the moonlight and stuff. And he said the first time it happened, it was it was quite unusual. So it, it may, I mean, if they're going around threatening people, I don't see druids doing that. No. Maybe it was, yeah. No. Yeah. You're bringing, um, but I'm getting memories of what we do in the shadows, the uh, New Zealand oh, yeah. movie. <laughs> I love that. Movie. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> very New Zealand humor, though. That it's like, oh, it's great. Yeah, it's, it's very funny. <laughs> it's like, do you know what I watched? What's that movie that Australians always talk about? The The Castle. Oh yes. When I yeah. watched The Castle, I was like, I don't understand what's so funny about this. Yeah, like, no, I'm why sometimes. <laughs> yeah, because it wasn't culturally my yeah. thing. And I think, yeah, what the in the shadows thingy, I can't oh. remember. The, what's it called? It's um, what, what we do in the shadows. Yeah, something like that. And they've got oh. this other show, which is, and I'm digressing, it's um, what, the ghost one in Wellington. I can't remember what it's paranormal. Para, paranormal. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen that one too. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so crazy. daft. You know, only Kiwis or like minded Aussies would get yeah, it. Very funny. But, um, <laughs> and um, I guess the classic. So, wrapping up, if I could give my younger self some advice knowing what I know today, yeah. what would you say? Uh, Get help. So yep. it's one thing to put it off. I'll do that one day. I really want to invest in property. I'll do that one day sort of thing. And, and doing it with your PPR is great, but <laughs> that's not really investing. Um, yep. And get some help, get some advice. Uh, look, what I did with PRE, I wish I had done that in my 20s, not in my yeah. 30s, you know, mid to late 30s. So um, time... I would love another 10 or 15 years more at this um, than I mean, even where I am now. I'm going to have another, you know, a long time yet. But to have started much earlier, but to have had the confidence to do it um, when there's a lot of people around you that would poo-poo it, no, nah, what do you do? want to do that for? All the people that sort of hold you back and, and make you second guess, get help, get advice, talk to some good people. And, and uh, the guys, everyone at PRA have been fantastic and, Oh, I would do it again, and I'll, yeah. I'm, I'm actually coaching my daughter, who's you know she's becoming very successful in her business. She's an artist, and she's actually um, becoming very successful. Actually, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, so she's actually now um, toying with the idea of getting into property in the next couple of years. Fantastic. Once she's built up a couple of years of um, income to be able to show the banks that hey, look at me. Um, yeah. I've already got her playing in um, um, shares in the share market. I'm educating her in the share market. So all that stuff that I didn't get when I was younger, I'm trying to help to because you know, she's got a bit of an interest. And to be able to start sooner, um, if anybody's thinking about doing this sort of thing, yeah, yeah. do it, do it. You know? oh, that, that's good to hear. And, and for your daughter, just in case you weren't aware, um, because you're a lifetime yep. Yeah, your daughter can come to mentoring, can be part yeah. of mentoring. Get, yeah. She's actually jumped on a couple of um, oh, webinars. Um, so I've been sending her the links and she's been yep. putting a name down and 
yeah, it's early days for it. There's a lot of jargon and yeah. stuff she doesn't quite understand, but she can sort of get the gist, yeah. but then she can bounce it off me. But she knows Perfect. it's a bit early yet, but yeah. um, it won't be far away. No, oh, she'll almost, the business keeps going the way it is because she's living off mum and dad at the moment. She'll be able oh. to buy property with cash <laughs> the way she's going. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mum and dad are there. That's always good. Yes, yes. Yes, the old bank of mum and dad. That's a whole nother conversation. It is. It is. It is. I wouldn't have it any other way. No. (laughs) Truer, truer words. Um, So anything else that was important for you to get across for people? Uh, Anything I haven't asked you? uh, Probably not. Um, You know, I've shared some interesting experiences, but don't let them put you off is is, um, my only advice. I mean, I was was getting a bit annoyed with it, with, you know, some poor experiences with Anshul, with, um, you know, Clyde North, with, um, we didn't talk about Elmore Vale, and that's been pretty good, really. Newstead was weird. Dornan's is now weird. But, you know, if these things come and go, um, expect them. Um, you yep. can't necessarily protect yourself from them um, because you don't know when they're happening and then they, you find out. Yep. Um, but don't let it hold you back because there's plenty of people you can get that can help you. Um, just like me from my experience with, with Anshul is that, you know, I've got you guys to, you know, can you give me a hand? And it was fantastic. You know, Emma, great, who helped me with, um, with Clyde North. It really got yep. me out of a pickle. Um, because she knew what needed to be done and she just grabbed the ball by the horns and got it done. And, um, yeah, yeah really look, great. that's the beauty of this is you can build a good team up around you. So Yeah, hmm. the old six-star team. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And um, there were some good stories in there, so I'm sure everyone got <laughs> a bit of a chuckle. If yes. they didn't, I sure did. <laughs> yep, good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome so thanks again tom no um, worries really Love to chat. we'll catch up another time awesome. hey thanks for listening to property investor tales remember to subscribe so you get notified every time a new episode drops As you can guess, I love hearing people's property investor tales. So if you'd like to share yours, then please get in touch with me via email at propertyinvestortales at positivementor.com.au. We would also love your feedback and I would appreciate a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember, you can watch all of these podcasts over on YouTube at Positive Mentor or at positivementor.com.au. Until then, take care, happy investing, and bye for now.